Good evening, everyone. Great to be with you all here this evening. I'm encouraged to, to be with you all here, and I'm thankful for the invitation to come out and speak. I love this group. I love coming here. We do. Uh, our whole family loves coming here. Uh, your family to us, not just uh, physical family, blood family, but also uh, spiritual family. And so it is always an encouragement to be with you all here. And uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to speak. We've had a warm encouragement, a warm welcome uh, to come. And so uh, I am a visitor here. Um, and there are several faces here that I, I don't recognize. And I don't know if it's because you're, you've recently become a member or if you're visiting. Um, so if you are visiting, if you would raise your hand for me. Okay, we've got a couple. All right, thank you. I, I just want to be able to make eye contact and make sure that, uh, that I know you are a visitor here. This, this evening, uh, we're going to talk about hospitality. Specifically, hospitality being the trait of a leader. My, my font is a little, little messed up, but it says Acts 2, 40 through 47, which is what uh, Bradley Craig had read for us, and thank you for, for reading that. Hospitality. And uh, the reason that I say it's a trait of a leader is, is we'll find in, in 1 Timothy. Actually, we're going to turn there first if you want to open your Bibles to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 3. It's the trait of a leader in the church. We're going to read about the qualifications of an overseer. But I don't want you, as we're reading this, I don't want you to just think this, is only, this only applies for those who want to be elders of the church. I want you to think about how this applies universally as a Christian. Read with me starting in verse, 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, and we're going to go down to verse 7. It says, the saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. It's a qualification of a congregational overseer of a local church, an elder, to be hospitable. But what I want us to, to, to think about this evening is that it's a responsibility for any and every leader. It is a responsibility for any and every leader. We're going to talk about that in here in just a minute. There's another passage in Titus, if you'd like to turn there, to chapter 1, starting in verse 5. Again, this is discussing qualifications of an overseer, of an elder. Read with me starting in verse 5. This is why I left you in Crete, so that you might put what remained into order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. If anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination. For an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach, he must, he must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard or violent or greedy for gain, 
but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. Why is it that a leader must be hospitable? Well, hospitality in the dictionary definition is a word that means general welcoming or invitation of guests or strangers. And, And I believe that that definition is true, but I also believe it's a little limiting. Showing hospitality shouldn't be just to strangers or just to guests. We should be welcoming and inviting to everyone that we, that we speak with. And we'll talk about ways that we can do that here in a moment. You can't be a leader if you're not willing to welcome and invite people. We often think of hospitality as something that's inviting someone to your house, welcoming them in for food, for conversation, and that's true. But it goes so much deeper than just invitation and and welcoming into your home. It goes goes far deeper. Open your Bibles with me to the book of Acts that we just read recently, Acts chapter 2. Read with me starting in verse 40. With many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. They were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. I don't believe the word hospitable is actually used in the Greek in this passage. But when I read, I see inviting into homes, having all things in common, being generous and giving your resources as anyone had need. If you continue with me in chapter 4, starting in verse 32, it tells us a little bit, uh, a little bit additional uh, idea here. Verse 32 of chapter 4, Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him were his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. It was distributed to each as any had need. Thus Joseph, who was also called by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. There's a common thread, there's a common idea in the passages we read. They were of one heart and soul, 
So they had unity. It says that they had all things in common. And no one believed that anything was his own. He didn't think that it belonged to him. He knew that the resources that he had were a blessing from God to be distributed to anyone as they had need. When I see that passage, I think of hospitality. The lesson that I want us to learn this evening is that if you want to be an influential leader, you must be hospitable. A good question to ask yourself tonight is, is do you want to be a leader? Do you want to lead? Regardless of if you want to lead or not, you probably are leading in some area of your life. Maybe you don't consider yourself a leader, but you probably are. If anyone has eyes on you and they're watching, you're leading or influencing in some way. You don't have to be the manager or the owner of a company to be a leader. You can actually be the very uh, lowest man on the totem pole and still be a leader. Do you want to be an elder of a local church? Is that, is that a goal that you have in life? Do you want to be a leader in business? Do you want to be a leader in recreational activity? Do you want to be a leader in your family? Do you want to be a leader in your group of friends? If you want to be an influential leader in any arena, you must be hospitable. Why? Because no one will want to follow you if they don't feel that they are welcome or that they are invited. I want to finish the lesson this evening by talking about ways that we can show hospitality. And then some considerations in conclusion. We show our hospitality by sharing our resources. What we just read in Acts chapter 4, no one believed that anything belonged to him, but distributed as any had need. What resources do you have in your life that you can use to show hospitality? We all have time that we can share. It is so encouraging to me when someone invites us to eat, to go to a meal. But it's not because of the food necessarily. It's because I know that if someone invites me into their company, they're actually giving me a portion of their life that they can never give back. They're giving me their time. They're saying that you are a worthy investment of, of, of my time. That's how we can show hospitality, by giving someone your time. You show hospitality by giving your money. We read in Acts 2 that many of them sold their possessions. They sold their land. Barnabas sold his land and distributed well, to the apostles, and the apostles distributed as anyone had need. We show hosp hospitality when we share our resources of money. Do you have a resource that could be a blessing to someone else? Do you see someone in financial, uh, that is financially hurting? Maybe they had something happen in their life that caused them to to not be able to provide for themselves. Can you be a blessing with your resource? We can be hospitable in our skill. Maybe you have a talent. 
how can you use that talent to be hospitable to someone else? Whether it's, whether it's actually doing the labor of, of building this or, or creating this, helping solve a problem in someone's life, or maybe it's also teaching someone a skill that you know can help them in the long term. We can, be, uh, uh, we can show hospitality by, by sharing our wisdom. Our life lessons that we've learned. Do you have a, a story or a lesson that you've learned in your life that you could share or impart onto someone to bless them? Well, maybe... Maybe you you don't feel like you have a lot of lessons that you can teach someone. Maybe you say to yourself, I I don't I don't have any life lessons that I can teach. Well, number one, that's not true. You do. But number two, you don't have to just share your wisdom. You can actually share relationships. How many people do you know in your life that could be a blessing to someone else? Do you know? Do you have a connection with someone who's in a, a similar uh, area or industry that you work in? That that you said, if if this person meets this person, then that could be a beneficial relationship. Well, we show hospitality when we invite, and when we say, "Hey, I know this person. Would you like to meet them? I would love to introduce you." This applies for, for congregational assembly as well. When we're meeting together with the body of Christ, maybe you see a visitor, some of you that raised your hand tonight. We're glad that you're here. We're encouraged that you're here. And if you're, if you're going and speaking to the visitor and you, and, you, and you don't really know how you can add value to them personally, but you know someone else who might, You say, have you met so-and-so? I'd like to introduce you. We show hospitality when we invite. Is there an event that you would like someone to participate in? You can invite them and be hospitable in that way. Maybe you can share the resource of your home, inviting them for a meal or inviting them to spend the night if they don't have a place to stay. We show hospitality when we share a resource of food, and we show hospitality when we share a resource of clothing. Many of you may think of Dorcas in Scripture that would make garments for for others. She She had a skill, and she used that skill to be hospitable to someone else. Some considerations and we'll bring the lesson to a close. Be hospitable without grumbling. Open your Bibles with me to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. It says, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as, God's, as good stewards of God's varied grace. I'm led to believe that if, if a verse in Scripture says something to this effect, be hospitable without grumbling, it means that we have a tendency, or maybe those that he was speaking to had a tendency to complain or grumble about being hospitable. It's not something that should be a burden or an obligation. And if you ever feel a burden or an obligation to invite someone over, 
and it causes you to complain or grumble, I would encourage you to check your heart. Ask yourself why I'm doing this. Is it really so I can help this person? Is it so that I can be hospitable? Or is it just so that I can show others that I'm doing something? Just to be seen by men. Be hospitable without grumbling. When assembled with the body of Christ, welcome and invite visitors. We often, we often think of hospitality if, if a visitor comes in and we shake their hand and we say, thank you so much for coming. And that's good. I hope you're doing that. But how many of us are actively inviting visitors? Strangers that we see at the grocery store. Colleagues that we work with. Family members that we know. Do you invite them to church? Do they know that you are welcome guest at Jones Road Church? When you do see a stranger or a guest, get to know them. And see how you can use your resources to help them. I want to I want to finish by sharing a story. We I talked about resources of, of money. I was uh, eating lunch with a colleague, and uh, after we had finished our meal, he he offered to pay. And I said, "Oh, you don't you don't need to do that. Thank you, but you don't need to do that." And he said, "Nathan," he said, "Whose whose money is this anyway?" I said. Yours? He said, no. He said, it's God's money. He said, so whose decision is it where the money goes? It was the money that, it was God's money that was given to this man. And this man chose to be hospitable with it. Because he believed, he believed this statement. That nothing that belonged to him was his own. The resources that you've been blessed with in your life are a gift from God. Those resources that we talked about tonight, Every single one of those resources is a gift from God. It doesn't belong to us. We are stewards of God's very grace. Are you using the blessings and the resources that have been given to you to be hospitable to others? I hope this message has been encouraging to you. We have not talked about salvation tonight. But if you're here tonight and you are not a Christian, I'd encourage you to become one. It's the best decision you can make in your life. It's a decision that will change everything about your life. If you know that you're guilty of sin and you want to become a Christian today, I'd encourage you to make that decision before it's too late. We're here to baptize you. And through God's blessing of grace, by confessing your sins and repenting from them, being baptized into into the body of Christ, you can become a child of God. If you are a Christian, but you've fallen prey to sin, You've let sin take over your life and you need help. Maybe you found through this lesson this evening that you haven't been hospitable like you should. You have resources, but you're you're holding them with you. You're not willing to give. I hope that you'll think about this lesson and make a change. And we're here to help. If, If anyone has a need at this time, we encourage you to come forward as we stand and sing. Thank you for watching this video. 
We're glad that you have found our channel. And in fact, while you're here, we would encourage you to subscribe to the Jones Road Church of Christ channel. We have several videos already up. And we believe you'll find these to be true to God's word, helpful to you in your journey toward God. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us and let us know how we can help you.